Hey folks, all you members of the Blue Light community, how are you doing? It's Brendan here, the founder of the group, uh, going to you live on a Friday evening. Why on a Friday evening? Well, I've just finished um, a coaching session with a client. It's been a long, long day. Got a whole weekend with the kiddies ahead. And I really wanted to get a couple of messages, key messages over to you before the weekend started. So uh, last night I ran a um, two hour, two and a half hour actually, ran over a little bit, interactive webinar for members of course 82022 who are preparing for their online assessment centre. And what we do there is we practice, you know, the whole idea behind the webinars is that the online course provides you with knowledge and understanding and the webinars are where we get to put it all into practice. This is where we take all of that learning, we put it into practice. And so what I asked everyone to do for last night was to prepare one answer for, out of my uh, question bank for the online assessment centre, just prepare one answer that will last five minutes um, using my SAL uh, method of preparing an answer for an interview question. And then we'll practice it and see what learning comes out of it. Now, I promised everyone that would be an awesome amount of learning. And there was. There's 10 things that cropped up that I thought I'd share with you that are really, really important things for you to make sure that you get right. So they're in no particular order. They're just in the order in which the thing actually happened, the whole thing actually happened. Before I continue, though, let's just do a few shout outs to a couple of people that are watching. Uh, Beth, Alicia, Sarah, Sam, welcome, welcome, uh, John and Andrew, uh, Paul and Holly, good evening to you, uh, to Liz, to Jane and to, I can't pronounce that name, Patricia, 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 just spelled a little bit differently. All right, welcome to all of you, welcome, welcome. So, and if you're watching this on the replay, by the way, um, then welcome to you watching this on the replay, uh, whether it might be whether it's on YouTube or Facebook. Um, before I continue as well, one of the things that I want to share with you, and you'll be able to check the links below for um, where you need to look for this, is how you can actually join one of these courses yourself and get involved in the practice sessions that will absolutely get you ready for your online assessment centre or your final interview uh, to the extent that I actually guarantee a pass if you if you don't pass you'll get a refund now I've got to make this really clear you know someone today has approached me and said look I, I didn't pass but I didn't tell you on the day and actually you know I didn't send you all the information and, and I just didn't do all of those things that are in the terms and conditions terms and conditions are on the website I think they're really clear and I think it's a really generous offer that that if you fail I'll give you a refund you know how how many other organizations will do that for a course that helps prepare you for a professional for an interview or whatever it might be um, but I do ask a few things that one you send me proof of the failure on the day you get it and two you send me proof that you've actually done the work I've set you I think that's fair let me know if you what do you think is that unfair or fair I think it's pretty fair so once they wanted a refund and had not done either just take my word for it that I didn't pass. Hey, <laughs> I got mug written across my forehead. <laughs> so, um, all right, let's continue with the 10 things. 10 things that, uh, pieces of learning that came out of the webinars last night. You're going to love this. Uh, they're going to seem so obvious to you as well, but look, when you're in the thick of preparation, sometimes you miss out on these things. So the first one is um, make sure that if you're delivering a great answer, it's to the right question. So very first uh, client last night gave an awesome, awesome answer um, to a question which would be around, we take ownership. Uh, tell me about a time when you've taken ownership for dealing with a problem. Uh, but the actual question was, tell me about a time when you've had to make a difficult decision and you've had to account for that to others. So we've got to be really, really careful and then we deliver the right answer. Because I had to ask at the end of this one, so what was the difficult decision again? And was a bit lost, a bit lost in the whole story. Um, number two, when we did actually look at a decision, this client actually came up with an awesome example of a difficult decision, a tough decision that they had to make. Um, and we talked about something called decision discomfort. 
So you know when it's a difficult decision, you know when it's one that's really testing you, when you've got this thing called decision discomfort. So watch out for the times when you've got decision discomfort. Don't just talk about, in my daily role, I make decisions. That's not what they're looking for. They're looking for a time when you've been challenged, where it's been difficult, where you've felt some decision discomfort. This isn't an immediate decision that you're making in the space of 30 seconds. It's a decision that you're making over maybe a period of days, but you've got time to collect all of that information that's going to help you make that decision and make the decision less uncomfortable. Number three, um, integrity questions. You're going to get asked a question about integrity. Tell me about a time when you've done the right thing, even when taking a different option would have been the easier, easier way forward, something like that. Um, when you're actually talking about the challenge that you've made to someone, you need to include the detail of the conversation. So this example here um, actually didn't really answer the question as well. It's another example where it didn't answer, answer the question that the bulk of it was about how they'd helped someone, not about how they'd challenged someone's inappropriate behaviour, which is what they were trying to get over, but there was only about that much of it. And even then, when we reflected on it, the conversation wasn't a long one anyway. So uh, it doesn't give you much. So we actually came up with a different one, came up with a different idea for that answer. Number four, this crops up often. Uh, again, difficult decision type question. Um, the client gave an example of a really big life issue, a really, really big life issue that they had to go through. And it was difficult for them to talk about it as well. Um, but the thing is, it wasn't really a difficult decision, not the sort of thing that they're looking for, um, because there was no other option really. The, the decision they made was the only one they could ever have made. So it wasn't really a difficult decision. It was a big decision. It was difficult at the time, but not necessarily what they're looking for in terms of all of the bit that comes before the actual decision itself. Number five, watch your speed. Oh my goodness, I couldn't keep up with this person. They were trying to pack so much into the five minutes and I just couldn't keep up with them. Too fast, slow down. Whether it's your online assessment interview or your final enforce interview, slow down so they can understand what you're saying. Um, really, really important, really, really important. Number six, uh, this was in respect of a public service answer. It's about a time when you've offered a great level of service. Um, using phrases like, I uh, delivered a good rapport. I changed my communication style. I was simple and child friendly. I stayed calm and professional. These are all just bold claims. You need to talk about how you did those things. And we, in our debrief, we went into how this client did all of those things and the answer is now awesome previously it was yeah <laughs> problem might scrape through because it's just lots of claims good rapport change comms simple and child friendly staying calm and professional a bit cliche ridden as well so let's watch out for those uh, number seven again around public service um, you've got to elaborate on the conversations that you've had. Key part of public service is about how you've ascertained the views and needs of another person, how you've listened to them, how you've involved other people. So more elaboration around the those things that really, 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 really count, which is the conversation, as opposed to this was about the, the actual description of the conversation it took about 20 seconds of the five minutes. Everything else was just interesting story didn't really answer the question though um, it does now it does now it was a very short answer as well actually uh, you've got five minutes and this one was just under three minutes so you've got plenty of time plenty of time um, number eight uh, we take ownership um, if you look at the behaviors and I've translated them into English for you on my uh, guidance document it talks about involving other people um, this example here did not involve other people so the individual took ownership for a problem and they delivered the solution themselves there was no interaction with other people so back to the drawing board on that one number nine um an example that was given which involved what i call tea and medals 
Um, great, awesome, well done, brilliant job, probably saved someone's life, great, well done, but doesn't actually demonstrate the behaviours that they're looking for in the particular competence or the value. So let's make sure that we are actually delivering an answer that isn't one that shows how awesome you are. We know how awesome you are. You are, you're awesome. Um, the tea and medals type jobs tend not to demonstrate the behaviours that we're looking for. I hope that's making sense. Does that make sense? Um, all right, the last one's coming up in a moment. Last one's coming up in a moment. Let's do some more shout outs to Lily and Steve and Joel, uh, Atichka, uh, Jill and Rowan and Rachel and Tommy. Oh, great to have you all on board this evening. Robinson, uh, Henry and Christoph um, and Kalinowski and Shadia. Uh, awesome. And Cameron. Great to have you on board this evening. By the way, if you've got any questions, please do let me know because I will be wrapping up in a moment unless you ask me some questions in the text. Um, if you're watching us on the replay, of course, ask me some questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you, especially if it's on Facebook. Even if it's on YouTube, I get notification of those comments. So please do let me know if you've got any questions at this point. And again, check the detail below. If, you've, if you think this is something that you'd be up for, honestly, this is a tough two hours. Um, and you probably worked out already that just about all the answers, half the answers needed a rethink, a complete back to the back to the drawing board, but helped people out with the back to the drawing board. And the other half just needed a, a better focus in the right places to make them really, really awesome answers. Uh, give me some loves and likes, by the way, if, you, if you're loving what you're hearing, if you're thinking this is great, please do give me some loves and likes. Facebook likes, loves and likes. If you love and like something, then Facebook thinks, ooh, other people might like this, and it will show it to other people. So other people will benefit from uh, this wisdom. It's not my wisdom, it's your wisdom. This is your work that you did last night. Course 82022, you are really throwing yourself into this. Some really, really good work coming out last night and some really, really good learning. And that's the 10th one, is the learning. Don't forget at the end of your answer to talk about the learning. And for those of you on my online course, you know that learning is not, I learned the power of open questions or I learned that it's good to talk or I learned that it's, it's always valuing collaborating with others to achieve an overall aim. No, those are just bits of cliched nonsense. What we really want to be talking about is what precisely you would do differently in the same set of circumstances if they cropped up again. That's the real learning. So you can include that in your answer and that will be your five minutes. It'll all be boxed off nicely. You've used my technique. You've used the structure I've shown you. You've listened to all of my advice and guidance. You've practiced with me. We've debriefed it. We've extracted the learning from it. As people said last night, the best place to make mistakes is here on Brendan's webinar. Absolutely, that is the place to make the mistakes. We do not want to make the mistakes when we are actually doing a competency-based interview live on the stage two of the Online Assessment Centre. Or we don't want to make those mistakes if we are at our final interview. We're at our final interview. So hopefully all good folks, all make sense. Um, it's Friday evening. You're not as chatty as you normally are. Not nearly as many questions as normal, uh, but I'll do a few more shout outs uh, to those of you who are watching. Uh, Lucy and Steve and Kellyanne and uh, Lily and Steve again and Joel. All right, great to have you on board, everyone. Um, it's Friday evening. It's time to kick back. I'm glad I got this one out there because I just wanted to share that learning. It's really, a really important learning. I, I love running those webinars because we always get so much out of them. Next week, we are preparing for stage three. Tuesday and Thursday, we're doing a stage three written exercise where you'll develop a template that you can utilize and just sort of drop it in, sort of cut it and paste it in from your head to the, to the actual online form for the stage three. Remember, you've got two hours to do your stage three written in and there's no camera on you. You can't use guidance that you pre-prepared before or any material that you pre-prepared before. There's no camera on you. I'll just park that there for you. Um, and on Thursday, we'll be looking at the stage three briefing so that you will have more than enough to talk about in the 36 minutes of talking that you've got to do for your stage three. Um, look forward to seeing you all course eight on next week uh, to help prepare you for that. Um, 
for stage three, if you're struggling, just be a clone of me and you'll pass. Guarantee it. I do guarantee it. Like I said, if, if you don't pass, I'll give you a full refund. Tell me that you've, sh show me that you've failed. Give me the proof. Show me you've done the work. I'll give you a full refund. I've given two over the past year, two. And both of them came back, actually. Both of them came back and subsequently passed. So awesome, awesome, awesome. That's what we're about. That's what we're about. Have a good weekend, everyone. Friday night now. I'm off to get a beverage of my choice. Uh, my favourite tipple. A little gin, naughty little gin and tonic. I think I deserve it. I hope you do as well. Whatever your favourite beverage is, whatever your relaxing kickback thing is. And if you're out there working at the moment, protecting us, serving us as a member of the emergency services, then I think you're awesome. I love you for what you do. Sincerely, honestly, I really, really do love you for what you do to help keep our community safe. And if you are looking to join the police or the emergency services, then doth my cap to you, kudos to you. You're about to join the best job in the world, full stop. Catch you soon. Bye-bye for now.